Well, hey gang, Taki Moore here in the driver's seat. Uh, super excited about today's special session. It's the first of three. We're going to do three really, really special sessions with a great coach, a, you know, a guy I've known for a couple of years now, uh, a black belt, and a guy who's got a, who's the master of a process called Three Minute Coach. How to remove all of the fluff out of your coaching, uh, coaching sessions to make sure that you get uh, great results with your clients really, really fast. And I just want to uh, quickly double check, can you hear my voice and can you see my screen? Let's just get that out of the way quickly. If you can hear my voice and if you can see my screen, just type into the question box. Yes, we can. Thanks, Jackie, Nicole, Carlos. Great to have you guys here from all over the world. Darren's here, Ellen, Eric, awesome, thank you. Raj is here, perfect. And uh, finally, Marcus, let me just make sure that I can hear you. Are you on the line? I am on the line, Taki. Thank you. Hey, perfect, mate. I am really, really excited about this. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, we are going to have an really absolute both. blast. Um, we are. In a second, I'll introduce kind of why, you know, why, you know, how this kind of came about and why we're doing it. What I hope you get out of it. Um, but firstly, I just yeah. want to let you know that this is the first of three sessions uh, that we are running together. So today is the system. Uh, webinar one, the system, and we're going to overview the three-minute coach system and show you exactly kind of what the moving pieces are, how it works, and hopefully do a little bit of three-minute coaching. Um, and then we're going to get specifically, there are kind of six steps in the system, and uh, in our next webinar, which is on the 11th of July, uh, Australia time, so probably the 10th Northern Hemisphere, uh, we're going to jump into the first kind of two parts of you know, of the how, which is how to open up your client. How do you start the session? How do you open up your client so that insights can pop? Um, and then in our third webinar, which is a couple of weeks after that, on the 25th, we're going to do how to create change, how to get, how to pop an insight, and how to move them uh, from insight to action and action to results. So we've got the system, opening your client, and creating change. If you could just put those dates in your diary, obviously you just factor in. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, you know, we're going to be a day before. Uh, by the way, if this is freaking you out that I've got my six on this side, that just says that you're not in Australia or the UK, and if it makes you feel more comfortable, you can put it there. That's totally okay with us. Um, so let's do this. Let me quickly talk about uh, how this series came about. Um, it's December last year, and uh, I've had this idea to, to bring a new person into the team, someone to help serve clients better, someone to help us make sure that clients are always moving forward and always making progress and always getting results. And uh, I thought that his name was going to be the Sherpa. And um, at the time, I'd been having conversations with Marcus at some Black Belt events about you know, his system. And he talked about this idea of the three minute coach, you know, the idea that um, most coaching sessions. You know, if you think about the way most people coach, it's like a, it's a, a session a week for about an hour forever. And in the hour, I mean, you've done it, right? You've been part of it, either been coached that way or, or whatever, where out of the hour, there's like three or four or five minutes of magic. And the rest of the time is it's kind of filler. It's like, you know, when I eat Thai food, um, I always say no rice, please. And they look at me weird, like, why wouldn't you want rice? And I'm like, I think rice is filler. I just want the killer. And so three-minute coach is like, it's like good Thai food, you know, where you get rid of the rice, or Taki style Thai food, where you get rid of all the rice, all of the filler, and just go to the straight to the good stuff, and you can cut out all of the fat and all of the fluff, and just do the bit that really, really counts. Marcus is an absolute master of it, and uh, just before Christmas last year, Adam, the Sherpa, and I flew down to Melbourne, and we spent two days uh, with Marcus in a three-minute coach training, learning the system, and it forms the back backbone of how we, you know, how the Sherpa sessions go and how we coach. I think you're going to get a ton of value out of it. And uh, Marcus, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, unmute you and I'm going to make you the presenter. That's cool. Um, so so that's yeah, unmute perfect. and Thank you. make you presenter. You should get a little message saying, are you ready for that? Yes, I'm ready for that. And you should be able to see my screen now. Can indeed. Uh, hopefully everyone can see my screen. Fantastic. Yep. Excellent. Great. Let's get started. Thanks, Taki. Yeah, yeah, this is fantastic. It's really, really exciting to uh, to be able to be here and to, to do this with you, Taki. Uh, and uh, and uh, it was exciting when you came down to Melbourne, and uh, and it's exciting being able to share this with uh, with the black belts, and uh, yeah, really wrapped that uh, that we can do this. So as I mentioned, we're just going to do an overview today of the three minute coach process, and uh, we're going to have a little bit of fun and uh, and do uh, do a live example uh, at some point throughout this morning and uh, or yeah it's through the webinar and uh, and really uh, yeah have a bit of fun and uh, and and play with the concept 
uh, because uh, yeah, it's a really uh, a really amazing process and uh, it's something that I'm very passionate about and uh, and really you know want to help you guys get uh, get the you know the most out of your coaching. Uh, process and most of your coaching sessions as you can. So, um, so yeah, we're going to, as Taki said, we're going to step through some stuff today. Um, for me, this is about, you know, how do you leverage a coaching practice? How do you get rid of the fluff? Um, because in my experience, you know, most coaching practices are full of fluff uh, and, uh, and you know, get, get yourself some more time and obviously maximize your, your dollar return. Uh, and, uh, and this process absolutely, you know, sort of nails that. And so, uh, so really excited to uh, to be able to uh, you know to be able to share this with you guys. Um, and so, uh, yeah. So we're we're this is the process that Taki mentioned before. We're going to run through the ask the show and the tell. I'm going to unpack that for you today. So no need to madly write this down or anything. Um, we're going to sort of unpack. We'll make sure that everyone gets a copy of the slides as well. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And so over the next uh, three webinars, we're going to uh, we're going to unpack uh, we're going to unpack this model. And uh, and have a good uh, yeah really good look at it and and uh, you know my desire is to give you you know some practical steps and uh, yeah to, so that you guys can go out and, and play this game as well so uh, so we're going to step through that over the next three webinars yeah and, Marcus, uh, just, while you stay on that yeah. can you just go stay on that yeah, slide for one sec absolutely so just wanted to make sure to, yeah everyone understands today we're going to go through you know the overview and kind of give you the the whole yeah. you know all six. Uh, on our very next webinar, which is on the 11th of July, uh, you know Sydney date, uh, we're going to go through that that first uh, kind of left hand you know left hand column, the ask. We're going to talk about picture and relay, how to start a session, how to open up a client, and then in webinar three, we're going to do the show and the tell, which is about popping yeah. an insight, uh, having them uh, you know figure out what to do with the insight, and then move to action. And so we've got uh, webinar one is all six. Webinar two is Parts one and two, and then three, four, five, six will be our our um, final session. Yeah, absolutely. Excellent. Cool. And uh, yeah, we're just going to step through this, and uh, I'm going to show you how you know how it works, and give you uh, yeah, give you an experience of it, so you can take it out and uh, and you know implement it into your to your practice. And so uh, there's there's a ton of stuff to get through, and so um, you know we are going to be moving you know fairly quickly. Uh, again, you know, Taki's rec recording all of this, so you guys can go back and have a look at it. I'm sure, and uh, and so um, yeah, so it is being recorded, as I mentioned, and uh, and we're going to give you a recording and also a copy of the slide deck, so uh, so it's all good. And um, yeah, let's uh, let's let's get into. By it. By the way, I love how old school your recording equipment is. There, that's fantastic. You like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Really do. <laughs> Yep, I've got it humming in the We've got somebody transcribing it right now on stone tablets. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So, uh, um, so a little oh, bit just about one my second. story. So, um, yeah, yes. Hey, John is saying he's having oh, trouble yes. seeing the screen. Let me just check in. Guys, right now you should see a picture of Marcus and it should say my story. Can we just make sure that you can see that? I want to make sure. Raj can see it. Okay, yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, um, sounds yeah, like we could. Hopefully, John, if you have any trouble seeing the screen, uh, you might just yeah. want to jump out and maybe jump back in. Is that cool? No, yeah. we're all good. Yeah, cool. Yes, can see Marcus. Excellent. All right, so um, just really briefly, a little bit about my story. Actually, my, Marcus, um, there is one other yeah. thing that I need to... Sorry, oh. dude. There's this weird That's ticking okay. that is happening sometimes in the background. That of mine? Hear that? Tick, 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 tick. No, I can't hear it. That's weird. Okay, it's, it's not there right now, but every now and again, there's okay. this like... Like something scrolling. Okay. All right. I'll. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure. <laughs> Just let me know. Let me know if you can hear it. Yeah. No worries. I'm not sure. Yeah. Not sure what it is. This end. So I can't hear it. So all good. So um, yeah. Just really, really briefly, a little bit about. Uh, a little bit about my story. Uh, and so uh, I've been a coach for uh, about six, seven, eight years now. And. Uh, and I suppose, you know, for, for, for me, you know, I, I built a, a successful coaching practice doing, you know, the normal standard coaching sessions of, you know, hour, hour and a half. And, uh, and I realized when my, uh, when my daughter was born, my third child was born, that, um, you know, I just couldn't, I, I, I just wanted to be home with her, right? I wanted to spend more time with her and more time with the family. And, and uh, you know, the coaching sessions were starting to, to kill me. Because I was flat out three, four days a week seeing clients, and I was back to back, you know, every day. 
and I get home absolutely exhausted and uh, and you know then having to you know deal with a, a newborn and you know young uh, two other children and it was just killing me and uh, and I made a bit of a pact with myself and I said there's got to be some, there's got to be a better way of doing this than you know than what's happening here I mean it's just you know it's just crazy uh, and so um, and so I started on a you know I suppose a little bit of a mad journey a few years ago to um, to absolutely be able to cut my sessions down and to become much much more effective and uh, and give my clients you know much much greater value and uh, and over a period of sort of six months I started to uh, you know, start to chunk my time down, and uh, and uh, you know, really harness the power of what coaching is all about. And you know, in my mind, the whole coaching journey was about getting amazing insights from my clients and having them go away with some really clear actions. You know, three clear actions to get started and to get moving. And so, um, and so, I, I, yeah, I started this crazy journey of chunking time down. And as I started to chunk time down, which is what we're going to talk about shortly, I realized just how much fluff was in my sessions. And, uh, and it, you know, it could have been because of my past sort of working life was as a you know, counselor and in the sort of healing space. And, uh, and when I got into the coaching space, I just started to realize as I chunked my time down just how much fluff we have in sessions and how much drama we play in. And allow our clients to play in, and uh, and I and it just as I saw it, you know, my time drop, I just saw how fluff started to go out, and what was left after the fluff was, the, you know, the, the the core of what was going on for that um, for that client, and uh, and the core things that they needed to uh, absolutely needed to focus on, and so uh, you know, after a while, I started realizing that you know I'd get to maybe the forty minute mark of my coaching sessions as I started chunking time down. And I realized that the rest of it was just, I was just trying to fill it. Like I was trying to get to 60 minutes. And, uh, and so I was just trying to fill it with whatever and allowing them to go on with some you know, story or uh, run some scripts or just talk about stuff that was totally irrelevant to the session. And so as I started to chunk down, I started to remove the fluff. And as I started to remove the fluff, what was left was gold. And, uh, and in the gold, you know, the clients just got... Uh, you know, propelled so far ahead, so much faster. And the other cool thing is, I had heaps more energy, and started to love coaching again. Um, and I suppose I loved it from a couple of ways. One is I got more energy, and two, I started to love my coaching practice, uh, and uh, and started to you know obviously be able to see more clients faster, and uh, and you know without dropping my dollar value. Uh, and so, obviously, increased my money and dropped my time, and uh, and it was really liberating. It was absolutely can I, liberating. Can I just ask the that's, question? That's, that's, yeah. you know, the first time I heard this story, I heard you kind of talk about this. Yeah. There was one question that was going like in my head. I just couldn't, I couldn't listen because I couldn't get it out of my head. Like, dude, is this yeah. true? Like three minutes? Is that an actual real number? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, and I think okay, you know, hang three on. to fifteen. Let, let me make sure I can understand this. You're able to yeah, deliver yeah. real coaching value in like three minutes at the yeah. same price that you were charging for an hour before. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Because what happened, Tuck, is I got out of time-based coaching and went to value-based coaching, which we're going to talk about in a sec. Okay. And uh, and rather than t selling time with me, I, I, was, I started selling value with me. And and at the end of the day, you know, clients don't care how long it, how long a session is if they're getting the value that they're paid for. So yes. increase the value, drop the time, and they're they're much happier about it as well. Because you know, who's got time to sit there for an hour, hour and a half anymore? We just don't have time, you know, and so we have to meet the market. And so the process then yeah, started to meet the market, and the market loved it, <laughs> and I loved it. And so, uh, and so you absolutely can run a, you know, an effective, powerful coaching session in three to fifteen minutes. Uh, and you know, obviously, over time, once you practice the art and you get, you know, really good at it, you can drop your time down. Um, and uh, yeah, you can get it to three minutes. Yep, but you know what we say, Tuck, is you know it's three to fifteen minute sessions, um, but you, you can, you absolutely can do that. And so, you know, the key for me was to stop selling my time, because you know when clients value your coaching through time, even if it's not explicit, even if you you know it's not really obvious, your know, clients when they think of time want to get the last you know second out of you, and in fact they want to get another two or three or five minutes to to feel like they got value. 
and uh, and and that's just exhausting because they you know they sap it out of you, and so when you when you refocus it and get them refocused on it's about value, it's the value of the insight, it's the value of the actions that you take away, not the amount of time we spend together, because time doesn't necessarily make any any better, and it's a little counterintuitive, right, Tucky? Like it's a little counterintuitive because so many people when I talk about this go, it's just not possible. Like, that's yeah, just, and uh, I, one of the questions I get asked sometimes. Uh, when people are you know, inquiring about blackbirds, well, how much one-on-one -on -one time do I get with you? And I said, well, if that mattered, which it didn't, which it doesn't, yeah. I'd you know, be happy to have that conversation. Let's talk about what you actually need right now. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Like, do you want so, the time faster? Yeah, or it's, like, it's I was like, sitting with a yeah. client yesterday who charged nineteen thousand dollars for a day with him the last time he was in the states. Yeah. Um, the client flew in, you know, paid the nineteen grand, sat down with him. Two hours in, they were done, like done, finished. Yeah. And yeah. the client just goes, yeah, the, yeah. My client just goes, so we're done. And the guy was like, yeah, I think we're done. Happy, yeah. and walked out. Yeah, it's like two hours. They had six hours of time to go, but he got the value. It's awesome. Absolutely, and they don't want the extra time because it allows them to get back fond of the job. Yeah, you know, and that's what we want to do. We want to get them in. We want to get, you know, get the get the value for them. Get them to take out that insight about what's either stopping them, blocking them, or you know, hindering their progress. And we want them to get on with the job. You know, get out and apply it and start moving. And uh, and yeah, it doesn't have to take long, at all. Awesome. And so uh, yeah, really important that you you know it's it's I think it's a paradigm shift. You know that paradigm shift from time to value, and uh, and you have to you know educate and guide your clients through that. And once they get it, they love it yeah, because they that's all they want is the value. They don't care. They really don't care about the time. But up front, it looks like they care about the time. But mm. um, it's because we haven't given them anything else to to. Measure us by yet? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And so this process gives them something else to measure us by, and it's uh, you know it's critical. And I think uh, you know it, it. You know the other thing it does, Tuck, is it allows you get to get on to with other leverage based activities. You know, it allows you get onto the stuff that you're teaching, where where you know you, you can do your still do your coaching, but still absolutely have time then to do uh, to do other activities. You know, because I think for a lot of coaches, you know, transitioning into you know, more leverage-based activities can be a little bit scary sometimes because you know the coaching is the bread and butter, and that's mm -hmm. where they've you know where they've got their their money. And so uh, this allows you to you know chunk your time right down, still get the same amount of money if not more, and uh, giving you space to go and do all those you know um, you know fantastic things that uh, that you're uh, you know you're sharing with us. So really yeah, it's 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 fantastic. And so you know for me that you know the key here is to get out of that coaching trap. That so many coaches find themselves in, which is that trap of swapping time for money. Um, I did a, uh, a, a, a 12, 15 years ago. I did a masters of entrepreneurship and innovation, and the very first class we had, the um, the lecturer said, uh, "Never get into a business where you're swapping time for money. Worst business in the world to get into." And uh, and of course, after that, I we uh, went into counselling, and then obviously into coaching. And so, um, for me, I had to you know I had to bust that and go, "Hang on a minute. Maybe you can go. You know, maybe you can be in a in a way." Swapping Swapping time for money. If you're getting your time right down, you're chunking it, being really sharp, and increasing your dollar value. But for most coaches, it's you know that's that trap of swapping time for money, and it's a it's a you know it's a, it's a not, not a nice place to be. And so you know this process absolutely helps you get out of that trap and into you know much better outcomes and and creating you know extraordinary value for your clients really really fast. And uh, and once you get moving on this, they are absolutely going to love you for it. Uh, and so um, you know, so that's a really you know that's a really great thing about it. And, and in the end, I'm you know I'm going to talk to you about how I use this. There's a number of areas I use this in. And so um, you know, for anyone sitting there going, oh yeah, but really, how you know how am I going to do the transition? And you know, we're going to talk about that over the three webinars. Hmm. Um, but there's a whole a number of areas where I use this process. You know, not just in coaching, but you know, in strategy calls and sales calls and. You know, it just it'll it'll just liberate you by helping you to convert much much quicker, because one of the secrets I found with conversion was when you do your magic, like when you show a client or a potential client your magic, um, the the deal's done. Like they just they they they're going to sign on the bottom line. But in the past, you know, if you've got a I don't know thirty minute or an hour you know sales meeting, um, it's hard to do a lot of your magic. Right? And so, with this process, you can easily integrate it to, um, you know, to do your magic really, really, you know, quickly, and uh, and it's impressive when that happens. So, um, so I really want to show you how to get time down and get your money up, and uh, and in that process, get three or four, you know, six times the coaching fees, 
uh, out of uh, you know less time than you've been uh, spending before, and uh, and really get you know much better results. Um, that was the extraordinary thing for me, Taki, was when I chunked my time down and I got rid of the fluff, I actually got better results. And it was one of those awakening moments for me that just went, wow, all this time I've been giving lots of time and lots of time and lots of time thinking that was what was getting the results. And really it wasn't. You know, It was just fluffing around and it was just actually causing things to go on longer. Because one of the things I find with coaching clients is they tend to follow your lead. So if your lead is slow and laborious, then clients tend to move in that same fashion. When your lead is really fast, really sharp, get on with the job, get out and make it happen, then your clients start to follow you. And so they actually get more results faster and better results because they're just copying your lead. And so, uh, so that was a really nice experience for me just to see how clients do actually follow you and put a whole lot of trust in you. And I suppose you know, it's that classic, classic cliche of the footballers you know, following the coach up in the box. You know? um, they absolutely do start following you. So if your sessions are long, then clients are going to take longer. If your sessions are faster, then clients are going to move much, much faster. Yeah, that's a, a really it's a, cool realization. I think coaching is totally a leadership game. There's no question. This is great. Yeah, absolutely, it is. It is, and this is a, this is this is a you know leadership mastery model. You know, to really lead, get them moving very very quickly, and uh, and they're going to love you for it because I think you know we need to meet the market, and we're in this really crazy time in our existence where the world is just you know so much more chaotic than it's ever been, and things are moving so much faster. You know, I talk a process about you know. Being at the you know the era of the speed of touch, yeah, where where when you touch a screen or touch something, you know it appears, and we're now moving into the speed of motion where you know you sit in front of your television and you wave your hands and stuff happens, and I think that you know there's this expectation in the market that everything's going to happen as fast as that, you know my daughter when she sits in front of me, we you know I was, I was picking a button off uh, off one of the image sites the other day and it came up on my computer and my you know five year old went out and tried to touch it, and I guess you know because it should happen right. Um, and so often I've seen kids walk up to TVs and try and touch buttons and stuff on TV because that's what should be expected. And so what ends up happening is now, as a society, we're becoming the most impatient generation of our, you know, ever. And so, you know, just crazy things like, you know, we can't watch a four-day cricket match anymore, so we invented a T20 format, right? We yep. can't, you know, we don't want to blog, so we tweet. You know, we're too impatient to send emails, so we instant message. And it just goes on and on and on. And so... In some respects, to be masterful coaches, we actually have to meet this market. You know, we have to speed up and meet the market because there's nothing worse than sitting in an hour-long session. And you know what you find sometimes either the client's going to do one or two things. One is they're going to try and suck more time out of you, or two, by about the 30, 40 minute mark, they've had enough. They just want to get out. And then there's this really uncomfortable sort of thing that goes on where you're both trying to extend it to fit into the hour that you've promised to deliver. And, uh, and I just clients don't want it anymore. So we have to meet the market. We have to speed up. We just don't have any choice with that. And it's only going to get faster. And so as coaches, if we're going to be black belt and professional and you know the best in our industry, we have to meet this market. And so, you know, for me, there's just this real change that's happening, and there's this line of possibility. Um, and again, it comes back to what we were saying before, Taki, where you know, when I when I talk to people about this, they go, you know, surely it's not possible. It can't be possible to run this. And uh, and obviously, you know, for me, it absolutely is. And so, you know, when you're a well, time-based like coach, we, uh, yeah. the the Sherpa process is literally built on this yeah. system, so it's totally possible. Yeah, absolutely, and I'm sure you know a number of you guys have experienced that. So, um, and so I think time-based coaching is what I would call commodity-based coaching, and uh, and when you're a commodity, you're you know you're at the mercy of time and you're at the mercy of money, and that's a really big issue. Yeah, and so for me with this process now, I never go up against other coaches. So um, it's rare that someone calls me in and says, "Oh, I'm looking at three other coaches. I'm going to pick which one." Um, and even if they say that, the minute I come in, I get about a you know, 99 to 100% sign up rate, even though I'm twice as much and half the amount of time or a quarter of the amount of, you know, two thirds, well, you know, a whole lot less time than any of the other coaches um, because, uh, because I'm not selling a commodity. Um, and when you do sell a commodity, which is that time-based coaching, then they're potentially going to start comparing you to other people and, uh, and that's just not going to work. You know, and when you are that commodity-based, you know, they're long sessions. 
And I say anything over 15, 20 minutes is a long session. And so, uh, you know, you're going to have long sessions. They're going to be scattered, yeah? And uh, because of the fluff that's actually involved in them, when that happens, it becomes really painful. It's painful for them and it's absolutely painful for you. Um, and then you're up against competition. Yeah? And when you're up against competition, because you're a commodity-based coach, that's just absolutely exhausting. And, uh, and it becomes, you know, it becomes um, difficult to, uh, yeah, to, to really build your practice fast. And so we want to get out of that. We want to get over this line of you know, impossibility or possibility and really become a value-based coach. And when you do the three-minute coach process, that, that's exactly what um, that's exactly what happens. You know, where you activate, you know, activate, in, you know, your intuitive intelligence, um, and that allows things to really expand for you, and you know, then to bring out the amazing insights that come from that um, from that work, which allows you to be much much more effective, and uh, and to create instant success, or you know, what might appear like instant success, so that you can get them in, get to the point. Um, get them three clear actions and get them out as fast as possible. So, uh, so it's just a you know paradigm shift to go from commodity based to value based or time based to value based coaching. And I think uh, you know I think it's a it's an amazing shift when it happens, um, and it's an amazing shift for your clients because they see you in a whole new light, which uh, which is absolutely you know for me it's it's just it's super exciting, and uh, and they love it. They just love it. I can't tell you. And when they're loving it, it feels like they're loving you more. And hey, who doesn't want a bit more love, right, Taki? Totally. I think the love's really, really so, important. Can we just yeah. pause right here and just check in? What yeah, I'd love to hear from people uh, so far is what's been most, uh, you know, most interesting, most intriguing, most kind of uh, useful so far. You know, what have you kind of, you know, what thoughts have come up for you about what's possible or what you've liked most? I just love to kind of get your thoughts. Please just take um, maybe 15 seconds. <coughs> Uh, we'll get to questions in a little bit, but right now, kind of what, what, what about this speed coaching model has got you kind of intrigued? What do you like? Uh, Carlos says, I've wanted this but never known how to do it, specifically giving value and then getting out of there. Yeah, it sounds like we want to be a little bit like a SWAT team, kind of kick in the door, take names, get out, maybe. Um, charge yeah. more, less time, have the confidence to deliver results in a couple of minutes. Uh, concept of commodity versus value-based coaching, I agree with the premise, great. A paradigm breaking, says Darren. Yeah, fantastic. From time to value. Uh, that this matched the market. So many of my clients are time poor, and this totally answers the problem. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I love the I love the framing of the concept of value based coaching. I'm not as fond of the idea of speed coaching. Totally agree, Ellen. So it's you know, speed is going to be one of the outcomes, but we're not going to sell. Hey, I'm going to coach you really fast so we can get in and get out, and we never have to talk to each other. You're going to sell value. Yeah, absolutely. Totally. Uh, value based, not time based. I've used this with a new client I just sold this week. Perfect. Uh, clients like short sessions more than long ones. Yes. Uh, Nicole, I'm really glad we're getting some support on, on, on making the transition. I love the sound of opening myself to my own intuition more, but I'm concerned about how my clients will receive the idea that I'm not charging any less, but I'm reducing session time. Yeah, we'll totally get there, I guarantee it. Yeah, um, focus fast and friendly. Uh, I get drained by super long sessions. And you know what? Yeah. Um, sometimes clients get in a rut too. You know, like, in fact, let's just do this. Um, <laughs> Jim says, I was thinking I was being super effective already. This is a good challenge to my beliefs. You know what I'd love to know is, I don't know if you've got a question in your slides later, but how long is an average coaching session right now? I think it would be a really good kind of, yeah. just to get a, a sense, like a little bit of a benchmark here. Yeah, that would be great. Um, yeah, how long is your average coaching session right now? Please just type into the box. That would be great to know. Um, yeah, an hour, 60 minutes, 45 minutes, 45 to 50 minutes, 60 yeah. to 90 minutes, an hour, an hour, 45, one day, two hours for coaching and yeah. consulting, 30 minutes done by an employee, Raj, love that. Raj has got instant yeah. coaching that he doesn't actually deliver, that's awesome. Yeah, nice. Um, my standard time, 60 minutes. So yeah, it's roughly an hour, why? Because that's kind of how long the average appointment slot in Microsoft Outlook lasts, you know, it's kind of... Yeah. Um, hey, can you just speak to one thing before we move on? Raj asked a really good question really early on yes. that I just love to kind of uh, raise and just get your quick Absolutely. take on maybe thirty seconds would be great. Um, yeah. Uh, where is this question? Okay. Uh, as you remove the fluff, you certainly yes. get to the core of the content. Yes. Um, so the content part isn't in question. What he's wondering is how does this affect the relationship? Because some clients are in it as much for the kind of the therapy side of things as they are for the content. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. And so uh, I think when you're really getting the insight, you're getting really deep into the insight, it, 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 
you know, for some it can feel like therapy, right? And one of the things that they love about that is that, you know, I, I have heard in the past people go, oh my God, I've been to a counsellor for months or weeks or years and in the space of like, you know, one minute or 45 seconds, you just got me, just like that. And, and you've got to the absolute core of the issue just like that and no one's ever been able to do that before. So um, although this is not therapy, for those that are feeling like they need some therapy, when you grab the intuitive insight, when you, um, you bring out the elephant in the room and you go really deep, because part of this process is about going deep fast. And uh, the deeper you go, the faster you're going to be able to go, which sounds a little bit counterintuitive, but the deeper you go, the faster you go. So it can, you know, for those that are going, oh, you know, I need a bit of therapy, then it can feel like that. Um, but it's therapy without the fluff. Yeah, a lot of therapy, you know, is about fluff, right? Is about bringing out stories and bringing out, you know, the scripts and bringing out stuff. And uh, and this is about not going into that. So, so uh, you know, yeah. So so it can feel like therapy, uh, and it can bring out those things that, that those that are looking for a bit of therapy uh, are looking, you know, wanting. Um, but you do it really, really quickly. And the key is to go deep fast. Yeah, so the key is to go deep fast and rush to answer what might be a part of your question uh, is, you know, how does this jeopardize the relationship or kind of how does this affect the relationship? I think you'll actually find that people will enjoy the relationship quicker because yeah. you're able to get to that long lost friend stage really fast, yeah. be really useful yeah. and have them actually uh, leave in kind of wanting more, yes. not just a chat. I think people will kind of bond to you or in your case your coach faster and yes. longer. That's certainly been our experience. So uh, yeah, I, don't, yeah, I don't think that cutting, the, like it's not going to feel. Uh, I think if you look at the watch, the sessions will be quicker. But if you yeah. look at the relationship, the relationship will be deeper. I think that's kind of something to keep yes. in mind, Raj. I hope, hopefully yeah. that helps. And that's All the right. key. Yeah. yeah. Because it's about deep. You know, therapy in, in essence is about, you know, that, that deepness, that rich, you know, deep connection. But you can do it really quickly. You don't have to take an hour to, you know, build that rapport. Not at all. You totally don't. So, Good. Okay. This is great. Cool. Yeah. Excellent. Yep. Good. So um, let me just go over some of the, a couple of the models really, really quickly. We're going to unpack these models, so um, I'm just going to go over them fairly quickly, and yep. uh, and then as we move through, we're going to sort of start unpacking them. So um, so the first one is what I call a meta model, and this fast track meta model, and uh, and it's really about being able to, you know, taking someone who's got blocks, needs, problems, whatever it might be, whatever their needs are, to be able to create a really amazing clear picture, get to the point very fast. And you know, get them out playing the game that um, that they need to be playing. And so, excuse me. And so, through that process, what happens is they get a really clear distinction of what's going on for them. They get, uh, you know, they get a really clear ability to make decisions and the right decisions. And they can make a dedication not only to you but to themselves fast. And so, what happens is they get clarity, they get better outcomes, and they get momentum. And so, from a for me, from a coaching point of view, is if someone's got enough momentum, they can overcome anything. Uh, and so, uh, you know, I think slow coaching or the sort of standard type of coaching doesn't create as no, enough momentum to have people break through barriers that they're, you know, that they're dealing with. Whereas this process for me creates amazing momentum. And one of the processes that I um, work through through my own experience is a thing called moving faster than the speed of disbelief. And uh, and you know after you know a long time of when I was in my twenties of uh, you know healing daddy damage, I realised that uh, that it just doesn't go away. And what I needed to do was to actually overcome my own belief system and move really really quickly. And so when I did the whole black belt process at Thought Leaders, that's where I really you know I realised that the faster you move, the easier it is to overcome blocks, um, habits, belief systems, whatever it might be going on for you, and uh, and create enough enough momentum to break through. And so the three minute coach implicit in its um, application is that we create momentum for our clients so that they break through whatever issues might be going on for them. And, and obviously not every coaching session is about you know, deep seated issues of you know, beliefs and um, uh, self worth, but uh, it'll help them break through anything that's stopping them from getting to that next level of success, which is obviously what they've you know, brought you in to, to help them with. So. Um, and yeah, so, so it's about getting momentum really, really quickly. And when they do, they get back onto the job fast. And so, um, 
the three minute coaching blueprint, and again, we're going to unpack this, so um, it's all cool, is that uh, you know, we really want to look at um, the three stages of any coaching session. And for me, I see it a little bit like, uh, like a flight plan, where you have a, you know, a take off, a cruise, and then a landing. And in that process, it's about, you know, up front, it's about asking really clever questions, really precise questions that are going to have your client reply in very succinct format and very definite format, to then jump into the show where you're actually exposing, revealing, and allowing them to have the aha moment. And then at the final step is to you know, really tell them what you want them to do, to get them to activate and integrate the insight, to get onto a clear action plan, plan and to get them to go out with three actions that they can take right now. And so, um, yeah, yes, Tati. Let me, yeah, so you heard my, <gasps> hang I on, did. did I just hear you say that you're gonna tell them what to do, not ask them what to do? Yeah, in a way, we're going to tell them what we want them to do, and we're going to do it in a in a way that feels like they've come up with the idea themselves. So right through this process, even though I've got ask at the front section, we're really going to ask all the way through. And yes. I think the most powerful thing you can do, which we're going to show in the next uh, webinar, is is how to ask really clever questions that get people to plant a seed and uh, and have them walk out with uh, you know having germinated the idea or what feels like germinating the idea themselves just by asking clever questions. So when we tell someone, we're going to tell them through asking the question, you know, asking questions. So it's not going to feel like we're telling them what to do. Awesome. Thank so, you. Just yeah. clarifying. So. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so we're going to implement the, the session blueprint, and we're going to break the session down into three distinct areas. And there's three core things we're going to do in each of those areas. And I'm going to give you uh, the skills to do that. There are three core skills we're going to, you know, I'm going to share with you about how to get, you know, get right into the point to grab the picture and and move really, really quickly. Okay. So, just um, I, sorry, dude. Yeah. Go back. Yeah. I just want yeah. to make two things really clear uh, or clarify two things. Firstly, um, the process moves from left to right. So the ask, that blue column, is what we do first. It's kind of how we start the conversation. The And that's about finding out what people need or having them find out what they need. The show piece is about having them uh, find an insight. Yeah. And then the tell is, so what are you going to do about it now, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Can you, can you go back to the previous slide? Sure. Uh, if you imagine that the slide we just saw with the three columns is overlaid on top of this, the this model goes left to right as well. People walk in yeah. blocked with some kind of need or a problem. Yeah. Uh, we're going to go through this kind of picture point play piece in the middle, which is you know asking questions, getting uh, a distinction, and then having people make a decision at the end and some actions as a result. So kind of they walk in blocked with a need or a problem. We do our yeah, we pop the inside in that middle piece and then they walk away clear with a specific outcome and they know what to do and they've got momentum. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Left to right is how we're rolling. Cool, just wanted to make yeah, sure. We're, we're rolling left to right. Yeah, great. Absolutely. Great. Thank you for making that really clear. <laughs> no worries. I just wanted to make sure that I'm on track as well as everybody else. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, that's fantastic. And so, uh, and so, you know, loosely we're going to break this down into three minutes. But again, you know, it's three to fifteen minute sessions is what we're what we're running. And uh, and whenever we get the you know the insight and we get them out the other end, it could be three minutes or seven minutes or eight minutes or you know. But the aim is chunk it down to uh, to under fifteen minutes is the key. And, Love that. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so um, you know, as Taki was saying at the start, it's really about making sure we get clear about what they need. And one of the things for me was that most clients have no idea what they need. They think they know what they need. They, they come with some needs, but more often than not, it's actually not what they need. So, uh, so the first part is really critical in, in making sure we get really, really clear with exactly what somebody needs. Because more often than not, they're going to come in with fluff. Right? And, and part of fluff is hiding. You know, how do I hide from my coach? How do I make sure that I'm, you know, not too vulnerable? So, so we'll come in with some fluff, and we'll see what happens. And unfortunately, most coaches don't get to the bottom of the fluff, and therefore, you know, you're really letting your client get away with, you know, yeah, with, with um, yeah, staying in that space, you know, of of fluff where they're just tricking themselves, where they're actually not being honest with themselves about what's really going on and what do I need to do about it. And so just finding that out can have them, you know, come up with their own insight and, you know, off, sometimes, certainly in, in sort of three minutes or under, you know, we nail that and, and the client goes, oh, great, got it, I know what I need to do, and they're off. 
<laughs> and I've I've sat there and haven't really, you know, theoretically done a huge amount Not except much. except facilitate the process. Yeah. And uh, and of course they're going to point to you and go, man, that's great, you're amazing, and so it's great. Love that. This is awesome. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So. So before we sort of get in and unpack a little bit more, Taki, I reckon we should just have a bit of a play, and right. uh, and maybe we can, you know, we can have a, you know, bit of a, uh, yeah, I'll just I'll give you an example of how it works. That'd be um, awesome, you know. How, so um, yeah. I don't want to be the guinea pig because that'll look staged. No. Um, why don't we find somebody who actually wants some help? And is there, yeah, how yeah. would you know who was kind of a good match for this right now? So the key for me is, and, and normally what you'd have is a thing called the rap sheet, where someone would send you in the rap sheet before you actually get to the session. And in yep. the rap sheet, the, one of the key questions is, um, you know, what, uh, what do you need right now? Right? Mm. So, uh, so I think a perfect example would be someone who's got an idea of what they need right now. Like what, in fact, why don't we do this? Why don't we just say, uh, pretend you're filling in a rap sheet right now and you've got... Um, 15 seconds to do it. If you think about your coaching business and where are you at, why don't we keep it in that context? Um, yeah. If you think about your coaching business and where you're at right now, what do you really need right now? I'm just going to give you 10 seconds yeah. to answer that question. Yeah, uh, fill it in if you're open for a little bit of you know some fun, right? Doing a little bit of three-minute yeah, coaching. That's right. We're just going to have fun with this, yeah. Yeah. And uh, we're going to just see what happens. Uh, seeing what happens know, is perfect. Yeah, and knowing that you know you, you, you know there's a questionnaire that you've you've got before a client comes and you've got the rap sheet you know completed, uh, and so half the coaching's completed before they step through the door, and that's the other great thing about this. Yep, that that you know half the session's done before they walk through the door, and so pre-coaching themselves is critical. And again, you, you know you're training themselves to be able to coach you know coach themselves. Love, love that. Yeah. Okay, so lots of people typing interesting things in. Um, uh, I'll let you have a look through and pick who you think would be yeah, a good yeah. match. You can see the list there. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going through the list now. Let's have a look. Yep. Thank you, everyone who's typed in. That's good. Yeah, yeah. I reckon uh, it's up to you, dude. Hang I reckon Jim's one's good, but it's up to you. Oh, Jim. Or Nicole, perfect. I need guts. Or Nicole. Just because, uh, yeah. Let's do. Let's 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 throw them. Do Nicole. That's that perfect. Yeah. That's You're the master blaster. That's fine. So, um, Nicole Stewart, uh, come on down. I'm going to unmute you right now, <laughs> and then I'm going to hey, mute Nicole. myself and get out of your way so you guys can just chat. Hang on one sec. Yeah, that'd be great. Oh, I'm going to unmute done. you, dude. And mute me. Hey, Nicole. Hey, Marcus. How are you going? I'm great. Hey. Yeah. Very well. Thanks. Perfect. Excellent. So, what do you need right now? Okay, so I'm taking my tools and repackaging them for a different market. I've re reached the glass ceiling in my previous market uh, and I've never marketed to these new people that I'm going to be working with. So I need to figure out how to package up my tools in a context that's relevant to them uh, so that they love what I have to offer and want it and that I can hit the ground really fast running uh, and get things yeah. off the ground really quickly in the new kind of part of my business. Yeah, cool. All right. So the first thing I'm getting you know, around this is, do you love them? I love them. Did you say? Without knowing who the yeah yeah, do you love them? Is this a market yes. you, you love? This new market. Yeah. yeah? Yes. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. So what don't you love about it? Uh, the, it's the unknown. Uh, I. Yeah. And it's very competitive as well. There's uh, there's already plenty of people in the area that I'm moving into, so I need to figure out yeah. uh, why I've got why what I have is special. I think when I when I take it to them. Yeah. Okay. So why what you have? Yeah. How is what you've got special? Uh, because I'm truly passionate about it, and I have been able to help other people transform their lives in the past with the tools that I have. So I know that they work. Uh, yeah. And I know that I can really, really help people with these tools. I just need to get them to buy into the process. Mm. So, yeah, okay. So, um, so it's about getting them to buy into the process. Yeah? Yeah, well, I've, I'm taking um, performance coaching tools that I've previously used with athletes and I want to repackage them for entrepreneurs. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so so for me, the thing around love still comes up, like you know, really loving them and relating to them, and being yeah. able to, you know, I see it as uh, 
the, the image that comes up to me for me, and it's not necessarily real, is, is the whole image of you know the friend, the best friend, and how do you be a best friend of these people? You know, the fun part about entrepreneurs is they're very insular and they very sort of hang out, you know, with themselves and like people. And so, how do you how do you be friends with them? So, what do you need to do to be able to do that? Like, what do you need in respect to that? Uh, I think I need to truly understand what I can give them using my tools uh, because as soon as I can see clear value in creating a package that is my tools in the context for entrepreneurs, then I won't have a problem backing myself in those conversations. But I think if I go in there a little yeah. bit wishy-washy, entrepreneurs are yeah, incredibly absolutely. intelligent people. Um, yeah. And yeah. So, you know, they're, they're going to know straight away if I'm not backing myself yeah. 100%. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, I feel like... Yeah. Sorry, go on. No, after you I was, Yeah, oh, no, I was, I was just going to say that I, I know that my tools work for athletes and I know that they work for entrepreneurs because I've used them in my own life. Uh, but I need yeah. to find a way to really present that to the people that I'm going to be working with because I know that when I see the value and when I believe what I'm yeah. saying, I won't have a problem yeah. saying it. Okay, so talk to me about conviction. Well, conviction is the difference between people creating the life that they want and not. If they uh, if they can go in and and back themselves and step over that invisible belief line, uh, yeah. then they can do or be or have anything that they want. Great. So, what's three things you need to do to to do that for you? I think uh, breaking down how I've used these tools to develop my own business would be really, really yeah, powerful. Right. So I can Perfect. I can be clear on that. Yeah, right. Uh, I think I need to do some research on what's currently available in my new market and how much they're charging. Yeah. Uh, okay. And and then I think creating a a bit of a offering for them that combines my tools with. Uh, with my knowledge of how I've utilised them in my own journey will okay. then help me to be more prepared to go to those people. Okay, so, so the key word for you is conviction, yeah? And, and one of the actions that you just talked about is going and researching and finding out how much other people charge. Yeah. And I'm not sure that's conviction, yeah? So I think okay, the key yeah. here is yeah. about backing yourself and going, yeah. I actually don't need to find out what other people are charging, I just need to back myself. Okay, cool. Because uh, yeah. that's a bit of a security blanket thing, which is, yeah, oh my God, sure. I don't want to charge too much and I don't want to charge yeah. too little and I'm not sure about myself. Yeah, right? So when you go into this market, you are going to have to go in like as a powerhouse and go, I am so, you know, I so believe in this. I so know how this helps. And, you know, the sports, the sports transition to, into entrepreneurship is quite easy okay. right? because they relate to that, right? They get that. So I don't think you need to be worried about that transition piece because I find you know, having done a, a, a Masters of Entrepreneurship and Innovation is that that whole entrepreneur space really relate to sports. And yep. so I think you can transition the metaphor. And so what I would want you to find is is one of those other actions is to metaphor yourself. Okay, so come great. Up yeah. with a, come up, yeah. So so how would things be different if you had a metaphor that trans, that, that segued these two um, to what might be seemingly disparate markets? How would that help you? I think it would make it much more tangible what I'm offering them yeah. uh, and, and I think it would uh, make in my own mind my value much clearer. Uh, at the moment yeah. I, I can definitely feel what you're saying, it's a little bit wishy-washy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the conviction's the word, right? So you need to write conviction on a wall, be, yep. big, big on a wall and then start writing words around that, Yeah, which is the metaphor around that, which is you know the belief in your product yeah? yep. and how it's helped sports people to excel. Yeah, and mm -hmm. it's going to do exactly the same for entrepreneurs. Uh, yeah. And then create the offer around that conviction rather than the offer around what the market's doing or what you, you know, your expectation of the market. Okay. Yeah? Does yeah, that help? excellent. Thank you. Yeah, it does. That's fantastic. Cheers. Yeah, fantastic. Excellent. Thank you. Thank Taki. you. Oh, my pleasure. So, that's... So, Taki, if you're there, great. I'm right here. Yep. Yeah, hey, Nicole, cool. thanks for playing so, for that. Appreciate that. That's yeah, fine. it was great. Yeah, so thank you. why don't we just thank kind of quickly you. unpack what just happened. Um, yeah. Talk us through, in fact, maybe an interesting thing to do might be to ask people what they saw. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, I'd love to hear yeah. some feedback on what you guys right. saw. Right, so what did you just notice? Uh, what did you learn? What would you like to share about the conversation that 
um, Marcus and Nicole just had. What yeah. what felt natural? What did you notice that felt a little bit different? And uh, can I just let's just pop a couple of kind of ahas uh from that little conversation? Yeah. Can I give you uh, let's call it ten seconds right now? Just first thought. What did you just notice about that little session? Yeah, great. By the way, Nicole, I'd love it if you could type in uh, how that landed for you, um, yeah, if it went the way you expected or not, and uh, whether that was a good thing or not. Okay, so um, Darren says Marcus was more direct and quite prescriptive. Yes. Yeah. Got to the core issue. Yes. Um, very interesting. Huge amount of intuition from Marcus and he directed quite a lot. Yes. Like when you said, do you love them, that was a really interesting insight because she hadn't yeah. mentioned anything about love. Right? We'll get into that in a second. Focus into the point. Uh, he asked three things. He asked for three things and left her with one thing to do around the word conviction. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Very intuitive on Marcus's part. Yes. Got to the core really quick. Yeah. Laser questions picking up in distinctive comments, says Andrea. I like the first question around do you love them. It seemed like your intuition was questioning whether she really did. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, yeah absolutely. Absolutely, and I think that's where you know obviously conviction came from because there's that hesitation of, you know, do I really? And I know she yeah. does at some level, but yeah, that's not what was coming across. And if you go into that market with that energy, then they're not going to buy. Right. Uh, Raj is saying, thank you, Raj, for the great questions from San Francisco. Uh, what happens yeah. when the client starts rambling because they're not focused at the outset? Unlike Nicole, is this taken yeah, care of in right. pre uh, in prep meeting materials? Framing it. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. It's taken care Absolutely. of in a rap sheet and in the very first question you ask. Can you just speak to rap sheet and first question just for a second? Yeah, great. So the rap sheet is something they fill out before they get to the session. They send it to you. So if you've looked at black, uh, if you've looked at Sherpa, if you've had a Sherpa session, you'll see that there's a number of questions that you have to fill out before you actually go into the session. And this is based on the rap, you know, on the rap sheet. And the rap sheet is just one page coaching sheet where we sort of talk a bit about what's the, you know, what's been your biggest win, what are you working on right now, and what are three things you need this minute. And so they've come in sort of almost pre-coached. Now, when they start with you, they're not going to get their needs correct, right? They're going to they're going to waffle a little bit. They're going to, you know, they're going to do the bit of the rambling. But the cool part about it is that they've had some time to think about what they need. And as your sessions progress, as you work with them a little bit more, they'll get sharper and sharper with this, which means your sessions will get faster and faster. Yep. And so we have a process that's called um, state management that we run with our clients. Yep. To keep them on track and to keep them really laser focused on what they need so that they don't start rambling yep? and, and so that we don't get dragged into story stuff or script um, because that's where the fluff lies. Right? So we get that fluff right out the road and so if Nicole had have been rambling I probably would have cut her off and gone right back to the heart of the question which is what do you need right now? Yep, I get that you need all these other things and you need a website and you need marketing material and you know, got all that, got it. But what do you need right this second? Yep. So to be able to do that stuff, what do you need right now? And it would still come back to the same thing. And so from that place where she is now, she can write amazing, you know, put, put together an amazing website and an amazing marketing material and all of the other things that maybe she needs to do. And so my key question, absolutely, Raj, is what do you need right now? Because I think the biggest issue is, and I often talk about this, is the first question is the most critical question in a coaching session. Um, Let's I just have pause. What is the... What is the... What is a question that you've asked in a coaching session, your very first question that you've asked that you think probably yeah. isn't as empowering as or, or kind of as purposeful as, or as it could have been? It's just like to, as you think about it, all the coaching sessions you've done, I'm going to give you 10 seconds right now. What's yeah. one question you've asked that you know started the whole coaching session down potentially not the most productive, powerful track? Yeah. Uh, what's been happening lately? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Great. How's your week been? Oh, How was your week? Yeah. How are you going? Oh, okay. What's your biggest problem right yeah. now? What's happened since the last session? How's your week? Tell me a bit about your business. Uh, what's yeah. what's most figural yeah. for you right now? What's happening in your world right now? So these are kind of what's going on instead of what are your needs. And uh, yeah, exactly. I think that's the, the way you start. So the, the rap sheet we found really, really powerful. And the first question is what do you really need right now? Okay, Just getting people focused yeah. straight into yeah. issue and we can skip the stuff. Most people try to build rapport. Like they say that rapport is uh, defined as a, as a relationship of trust and responsiveness. And what most people try to do is to earn somebody's trust and to um, you know and to ask for responsiveness. And what I found more effective, and what I think the three minute coach process does well, and Marcus, this is my words, not yours. And I don't want, yeah. if this is wrong in any way, please don't, please kind of yeah. shut me down. Yeah. Is yeah. that you don't try to build trust 
or earn responsiveness, you assume trust and you demand responsiveness right from the yes. start and people just jump straight in. You know, you're leading and they're, you know, they, they're happy to jump in. Yeah, perfect. That's exactly, that's exactly right. And so this first question is the most critical and uh, one of my little sayings is how you start anything is how you finish something. And so yep. if you start with a fluffy question like, you know, tell us about your week or how was your week or any of those things, then, uh, you know, the session is just going to build fluff, right? Because uh, we want them to get right to the point, you know, no mucking around. These guys are paying us good money. You know, there's no time for fluff. Let's just get on with the job and get you out. And, you know, you don't have to be my best friend and, you know, any of that stuff. But, you know, the fun part is they do actually love you more for it, right? Because they if, they're, so, if their well, life's full of fluff, sorry. then, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Up to you, Marcus, you know, please. How they, do, how they do anything is how they do everything, right? Yep. So if they're coming in with a whole lot of fluff, then their world is full of fluff, which means they're not getting success faster, right? Because they're faffing around. And I go, no faffing around. Get on with the job. Let's make it happen right now. And, uh, yeah. You get to be unreasonable friend in a really nice way. Um, I asked Nicole just privately by chat saying, you know, uh, how did that land for you? Uh, you know, how did that feel? And she said, that was great. Uh, felt like he went very deep and fast by asking the right questions. He was intuitive and that made it more powerful. I felt guided and supported in a, in a great way. Enjoyed it. Felt super productive when compared to many of the coaching experiences I've had. Magic Marcus, thank you. And then I followed up with, so was Marcus on track or off track in terms of the issue? And uh, she said, totally on track. So. Yeah. yeah, good to know, right? Cool. Yeah, great to know. Thank you. Yeah, fantastic. Thanks, Nicole. That's um, brilliant feedback. Yeah, uh, Darren's yeah. just saying, can you please say the trust and responsiveness thing again? Yeah. So rapport is defined as a relationship of trust and responsiveness. And I think most people try to earn trust and ask for responsiveness. And what leaders do is they assume trust and they demand responsiveness. Think about the very first three minutes of the Million Dollar Coach Intensive, Darren, where I walked out. Yeah. And I said, great to have you here. Please raise your right hand, wave it around, put your hand on the shoulder of the person next to you, give him a shake and say, oh crap, he's interactive. I didn't try to earn your trust and ask for responsiveness. I demanded it and you gave it, right? It's yeah. kind of the same, same vibe. Absolutely. Uh, Ed says, can you say the first question to start a session again? The first question is, what do you really need right now? Yeah, that's exactly it. Just right. go straight to that question and you'll cut out a whole lot of fluff right there and then. Perfect. Marcus, this is great. Please continue. Yeah. And, and the key with that then, uh, it would just to keep them on track, right? To keep them to that because some clients will then try and fluff, right? So some clients will come into, and especially if you're transitioning into this process, because they're used to fluff. So what they'll try and do is then create fluff. And you just keep on that question, yeah, which is that's really great stuff. Thank you. But what do you need right now? Yep, I get that you need, you know, you want this and you want that, but what do you need right in this minute? And so, you know, for me, that you know, the key with that is to make sure we're being really laser focused, yeah, and getting our clients laser focused because if we can get them, train them to be laser focused in a session, they're going to go out into the world and apply that in their lives, right, in their business, in their, you know, organisation, whatever it might be. And uh, and what happens is they start to change the way they interact with the world, and so. Just filling rap sheets out, just running the rap sheet has them become more effective um, and better at what they're doing, which is really, really exciting. And so I think this is why they love it so much, because it's not just about the coaching session. It's actually training them how to be in the world, yep. especially when it comes to business or corporate where, you know, things are moving quick and you've got to keep up. And so, uh, you know, yeah, our, our brain can't handle, you can't deal with fluff, you know, fluff anymore because, so, you know, information comes so fast that you can't hold fluff any longer and we have to train our clients not to do that. Love and that. so, yeah, and so the key with it is, is that, you know, so often uh, coaches are using the wrong framework. You know, the coach training and, uh, you know, I developed a you know, ICF accredited coach training organization and when I went out and sort of looked at what other coach organizations were doing, training organizations, I realized that they just got the wrong framework. You know, it's old framework now. And, uh, and, and we need to you know, bring it up into the, you know, the current millennium of, of rapid, of things happening fast, of, you know, in, of you know, over, over information and over stimulation and try and cut that right down so that you know, we, we, you know, we, we don't buy into the frustration of, uh, of our clients and we don't personally get frustrated with our time, you know, time being capped, income being capped and us getting really exhausted. You know, what we're doing is creating inspiration getting them inspired to move quickly so that we get fast and effective results. 
Yep. And so, in, you know, in this process, it's about developing a really dynamic system. And uh, I just want to unpack this a little bit, Taki, just to sort of you know go into this a little bit deeper, so sure. that people sort of understand this. So, you know, so for me, in that first, you know, that first few seconds, which is just critical, what we want to try and get to is really build a pitch fast. I want to know what's really going on. I want to know what's going on behind the story, behind the language someone's using, so that I can build that picture for them very, very quickly. And uh, and you saw that happen with Nicole, right? She had one picture about where she thought you know things were at or where they needed to be, and and we cut right through that to go. This is exactly what's going on. It's not all, any of that other stuff. It's this. This is the thing. So we built a really really clear picture for her, and that helped her to pop the inside of of what was needed. And so um, and so in your first section of your coaching, and again break your coaching session into three distinct sections. And in that first section, we want to make sure we get the picture of the three core needs. Not what they think they need, not what they think they want, but actually what do they really, really need right this minute. Yep. Mm. And even if we just come up with one need, right? You don't have to come up with three. Three is nice because you get to pick to which one to play with. But they've got to come up with one, you know, that one core need, which is the picture of what's really going on for me. Yep, beyond the belief system, beyond the fluff, beyond the story, beyond the hiding, right? Because most clients hide. I think it's human nature that we sort of hide from ourselves. And so this process is about making sure no one hides and bring that out and create that picture really, really fast because nine times out of ten clients can't, you know, don't know the real picture. It's that whole, you know, again, that cliche of, you know, you can't see the wood through the trees. And it's that whole, you know, when you're that close to it, you can't actually see it. And the value in a coach is to be able to build that picture and show, you know, show the client that picture. And, you know, once we've done that, to really get onto the point as fast as possible. So go deep into the point. Again, what's really, really going on? Give them one clear insight, and it could be one word, like we came up with today, which was conviction, um, or it could be a sentence. It could be, uh, you know, something. But we want to come up with one clear insight. And what often happens in this process, once people get used to it, is they start popping their own insights. So one insight, you know, one insight will be uncovered, and then all of a sudden, over the space of about, you know, thirty seconds to a minute, they pop two or three other insights. And uh, and when you do, their world changes. All of a sudden, their whole world change, and they reframe what's going on for them, and reframe what they actually need to do to come out the other side. And then the important thing is we get them out playing the right game. Right? So it's really important that we get them on the right field. And I think so often people are, you know, playing the wrong game. And so when that happens, they, um, you know, they don't know the rules of the game. Right? And when you don't know the rules of the game, you get fouled all the time. And so what we want to do is we want to prescribe three core actions. We want to get them playing the right game that they need to play right now. Yeah? And so for me, it's, uh, it's the right action at the right time, not the right action at the wrong time. And I see so many clients do right action, wrong time. Um, and mm -hmm. so really important that we get them playing the right game so that, yeah, we get them doing the right actions at the right time. And then what you'll find is that you'll chunk time, right? Time will start to chunk down because you know there'll be no mucking around with, um, yeah, with 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 the, the fluff, with the stories, with the scripts that they're, you know, they're running. Their belief systems don't necessarily get in the road. We just start to, you know, break through. And like Taki said before, it's a bit like the SWAT team. You know, we come in. We get rid of whatever needs to be gotten rid of, and we're off again. And so, uh, yeah, jumping in and being that SWAT team is sort of what it's you know what it's like. So we did ask this question before, so I'm just going to skip that. But what if you know what would happen if you could drop your time from three to fifteen minutes? You know what would happen to you guys if you could actually do that? How would your world change? Is something I'd love to know. If that's all right, Taki. Yeah, totally great question. Know, what, so, what would, what the would question is, if we world, could drop right? your coaching session from the forty-five minutes to an hour, or whatever it is right now, down to you know, three or ten or fifteen minutes, and have clients not just kind of drop the time, but have clients get better results and deeper relationship with you, what kind of impact would that make? Yeah. That's a great question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Darren asks, do you find that you have the same insights for different clients? Uh, generally, insights are very individual. So. Um, there's not necessarily themes for clients at all. Uh, you know, there's some un underlying behaviours that show up over and over again, and so. But insights are, are always seem to be different for each client, exclusive for each each client. In my experience. Yeah, and I think if you uh, if you find yourself having the same insight for every client, it probably says yeah. that uh, the sessions are more about you than about anyone else. Um, yeah. 
Absolutely. Darren, I had a, the first coach I worked with, at the end of every coaching session, would write, write down what the core issue was. And uh, at the end of the week, he'd look at the core issues and go, so if that's what's going on for my clients, what does that say that's going on for me right now? Because you know, he, in his words, life is a mirror. Uh, and so he'd kind of yeah. use that as a really... Uh, as a really kind of interesting insight for him, but you know, what was really going on was that he just yeah. spent his whole session talking about himself and his issues um, and projecting them on the yeah. client. So I actually think <laughs> you know, if you're getting the same insight for everybody, it says that you're yeah. focused on the wrong person. Yeah, and take that insight for you and go and deal with it. You know. Yeah, correct. Um, Andrea says uh, I could uh, more focus and time savings for both the client and the coach. Yeah. Probably made the clients happier uh, as long as it's effective. Yeah. Uh, Grant says I could add more clients without giving more energy. Love that, Darren. You're welcome. Uh, Nicole says I'd certainly enjoy my coaching clients more because I'd have more confidence in the transformation I was helping them achieve. I'd also really enjoy stopping some of the fluff that flies around. Yeah, fluff is the fluff that flies around. More credibility, give more value to the client, and more time for you. Yeah, totally. Uh, this is a truly congruent, honest, and more effective model. Jim, totally agree. Yeah. Um, yeah, Darren, perfect. Uh, so if done correctly, you won't come across as you being uninterested, arrogant, or rude. No, Kevin, it'll 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 have you it'll have you um, come across as being someone who is so completely interested and so completely engaged that you you're able to listen deeply, get someone, have them come to an aha, and walk away going that was amazing, and I know exactly what's going on for me and what to do about it. So yeah, it's totally not going to come. I think um, one of the problems. Uh, potentially that's come up is it by calling it three minute coach we're focused on get in and get out um, yeah. which which is probably one of the outcomes that will happen for you if we focus on if we flipped it and made it not about the result for you time wise but more about the result for the client it's about um, oh. get clear and get confident and get going much much faster that's what it's really about yeah absolutely Kevin absolutely. hopefully that helps and uh, Raj says I could use it internally with employees and that's absolutely how we use it you know I go into organizations and train you know leaders and managers how to use this and you know rather than catching up with each of you know your direct reports for an hour you know catch up with them every day for three minutes right you've got 10 reports that's 30 minutes a day now you know Harvard research shows that the uh, certainly from an employee engagement point of view that the uh, the shorter the contact time, but more frequent, the better, right? So yes. long sessions with employees don't doesn't actually increase engagement, but really or short, annual sharp performance review sessions and more of them, yeah, yeah, absolutely, more of them it actually does show that it increases you know intrinsic motivation and uh, and engagement, and so this is a killer process for uh, for doing that with um, leaders and managers. Yeah, uh, Andrew's just saying, are the sessions face to face or phone or Skype? The truth is, uh, they are, however they are. All of, all of the above. above. Yep. So some yep. clients like to be here in front of me and I go, that's fine, but then they know the time and they, they're happy to drive whatever they drive to get here. But obviously a yep. lot of them are phone, Skype, you know, any, any of the above. Yeah. So let me just reiterate, it's not about time down, it's about value up and it just happens yeah. to be that the way we drive value up is by removing the fluff which has the byproduct of, of, of time down. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, perfect. love that. Yeah, it's exactly this is great, right. Marcus. Um, I just yeah. want to quickly yeah. check in. What's been most helpful so far, guys? Going to give you ten seconds. What's been most useful so far? What's been most useful so far? Yeah. Great comments too, by the way. Tony. Yeah, great comments. Appreciate that. No, really time. Thanks, to Carlos. Yeah. Max. Uh, it's value driven. Exactly, says yeah. Carlos. Absolutely. What I've noticed, yeah. uh, Marcus, is um, that. The clients, like it's not in your interest or the clients for sessions to be long. Um, and that by giving the clients what they really need right now, you actually get what you really need right now, which is energy and time back. And one of the things which can happen Absolutely. in a traditional coaching business is that your energy goes down and your time gets eaten up. Uh, Nicole said that little coaching session was awesome, exactly what I needed. Thank you. Learned a lot from both a client perspective and a coach perspective. Efficiency. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, efficiency. Brilliant. Yes, uh, rap sheet, Kevin said perfect. Kevin said Great. Yeah, it's good. Uh, would you let your current clients know that you're moving to a value model and the rap sheet was the first step towards that? Yeah, we'll talk about how to transition yeah. well really soon. Uh, maybe, I'm not sure if it's this webinar or it's one of the other webinars, but we'll talk about how to transition well. Uh, before you yeah, go right. moving your clients over, let's just make sure you're kind of trained up and you know what you're doing. Um, <laughs> otherwise, you're going to, you know, your mouth writing checks, your body can't cash. So let's not do that. Yeah. Cool, James? Yeah, no, 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 don't do that. And there is a process for transitioning them. And uh, and so we, yeah, we'll absolutely talk about that in the upcoming webinars. So it's yeah. good. Awesome. Good. All right, Marcus, this is Great. totally All tops. Right. Where to from here?
So, um, so let's talk a little bit about creating impact, and uh, because I think that's what this does, right? It creates really deep impact, and uh, and I think that's uh, you know that that sort of just goes on that whole value-based you know coaching model that we're talking about. And so um, you know even though we you know even though we're talking about time, um, you know, and trying to remove that emphasis on time and remove it you know move it into value-based. Um, you know, I think the way you framed it up was perfect, Tuck. It's not about dropping time per se, it's about increasing value and the way you do that is is by dropping time. Like it automatically just happens. So yes. um, <coughs> and really it's probably about, you know, we could probably swap time out and talk about commodity based versus value based. Yep. And keep you know, keep off that time thing and go, yeah, you know, I just don't want to be a commodity coach. And uh, you know, everything you've taught me and you know, teaching the black belts is about be a value based coach, right? Yep. Don't be a commodity coach. Yeah. Being a black belt coach, you can't be a commodity coach. Like it's, you know, it's about being, you know, the top five percent coaches in the world, and so you have to start switching that paradigm in your in your head to make sure that it's really becoming value, you know, value focused. And so the process, like we've just gone through, of the ask, you know, where you're really getting, you know, asking the specific questions, being right to the point, rather than asking fluffy questions, is is absolutely critical. So then make sure you're uncovering that insight and showing them what in the room. Is, is really part of that, but giving that that spark, that that uh, that flash of insight, because that's where the value is. It's insights, because clients can't get insights on their own. Like it's hard for us to get insights on our own unless some event happens. Yeah, you know, we have a car accident, we have we get feel sick, or something changes in our environment that may then pop an insight for us. Um, but it's very very hard to do it on our own, and so this is where the value lies for you as a coach, is being able to pop insights. And have them walk away feeling feeling different because when you have an insight, you know it's about creating a new reality for yourself, and uh, and that's that's where the value is. So then make sure you're going and telling them what they need to do, right? Being very clear about you know what do they need to do, and you can do that through questioning, like I did, so that it doesn't feel like you're telling them what to do. Um, and so uh, yeah, you want to make sure you're being very very clear, you know, clear about that, uh, and uh, and getting them on with the job. Yeah, and I think you know what it allows you to do is both you and the client come out from behind the veil. Yeah, I think when you when you're full of fluff, when the sessions are full of fluff or the clients full of fluff, it's a bit like they're hiding half of themselves. And so um, you know, so so we want them to come come from behind the veil so that they can really see what's going on in their world, get a clear perspective, and that they can then move on with it. Yes, Taki. No, good, loving this. Nothing to right. add, Your Honor. Okay, cool. So, so currently at the moment, you know, one of the things I was going to ask is, where is your value right now? Yeah, and and, and I suppose, so so where do you think your value is right now as a coach? Right, where do you think your value lies as a coach? Right, well, I've talked about you know insights is where the value lies, but I'd love to hear where does where, where does value lie for people right at the moment? And maybe we've asked this question because, you know, it's part of that what if you know what if you were to let go of those things and focused on you know that value so. Yeah, where where is people's value at the moment? Give me an example. Just I'm not sure I fully understand the question. So, uh, so are people relating to time as where the value is? Is it yes. uh, is it you know providing them with resources? Is it uh, you know where where do that you know it could be having a whole online portal of you know a ton of videos or something that, that where they see the value? Um, and I think you know part of it is we need to switch that up and go yeah that's right. absolutely valuable. But it's not the value. What a great insight! Uh, so, just to give you an example, so the question is, uh, you know, I think that one good way to, to think about this is if you think about the last your know, ten sales appointments you've had, where have you positioned the value as as being? Is probably a good yeah, way to ask right. the question. That, that's um, so, in the last you know five or ten or fifteen sales appointments or webinars you've done, where have you positioned? Where have you said this is where the value is? Where, where have you shone the value spotlight? And I think this reminds me a little bit. And I can I just answer why people take ten seconds right now and type in their their answers? Um, yeah. When we interviewed George Burnback about his shift from one on one to one to many, he'd positioned that the value was in uh, personal care, attention, and time with him, and he needed to reshift that the value was actually in the knowledge and the strategy, <coughs> not yeah. in the hours. Yes. So we train our clients Perfect. where the value, you know, where you know, where to believe the values at, and uh, I think it's a, it's a great question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Jackie says, my value lies in my intuitive insights into what's happening beneath their words, but it takes me so long, so much longer to get there. I get that. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, revealing the context of the client. My value uh, is in my content. 
opening their eyes, motivating and empowering. Raj, exactly. Love that. Yeah. Uh, I help clients formulate these ideas and solve problems that they can't see without a catalyst. Yes. I have positioned my value as making them aware of their habits that are holding them back. Love that. My value comes in me being real and setting clear actions for them to do. My value is in shifting their beliefs. See how none of these are about the, the amount of time or the, or the way we deliver it. Yeah. I think your insight uh, before, Marcus, was about um, yeah, that stuff is valuable, but it's not where the value lies. Love That's that. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's absolutely valuable, but it's not the value. So, it's totally not the uh, value. Yeah, yeah. And I think you know, insight value, or the, what we're talking about here, you can absolutely do some magic in a sales call, right? In a strategy session, in you know, in, in you know, in um, converting clients. Whereas the whole content piece, or you know, the stuff that that you perceive is valuable, is a lot more difficult to really show people in short bursts of time. Right. So my sales calls now, my sales meetings are fifteen minutes. And can yeah for some you know it can sort of almost shock people and but it sets me apart from any other coach right because every other coach comes in and sits there for an hour hour and a half and goes through all the strategy and systems and processes and all of this stuff and I just come in and go hey we're doing this right because this is where I think you need to be and they go yeah that's exactly where I need to be oh my god I can't believe you got it so fast and I go hey if we can do this in fifteen minutes imagine what you know ninety days with me could achieve yeah and the deal's done right. The deal's done. So then you stop competing with other coaches, and you be, you know, you don't play the commodity game. Love that. And that's that's important. Cool, great, excellent. So let's just go on to the last little bit, Taki, if that's all right, and yep. uh, just to overview. And it's about this fluff, right? Because it's you know the key here is about removing fluff, and uh, and uh, you know getting getting the fluff out of a session. And we've already talked a bit about you know wrong questions. You know, people are asking the wrong question up front, and then the first question is super critical to set the tone for the whole session. And we've talked a bit about what that question is, and in my head, it's you know, what do you need right now? It's simple. Same question every week, or every fortnight, or whenever you're catching up with them. And eventually, you know, with the use of the rap sheet, they get to know what you're going to ask them, and so they come prepared. So they start to pre-coach themselves, so that you get right onto the job straight away, and there's no mucking around, which is brilliant. And so, you ask you know, when that yeah, absolutely. Okay, so on the rap sheet, you've already said what do you really need right now, and so just to be clear, the rap sheet says kind of uh, what are your wins, what are you working on, what do you need, basically, yeah. right? Which is really yeah, funny because right. when I saw that rap sheet, I realized that's exactly the questions I ask in my Q and A's every time. What do you, what's your biggest win? What are you working on? Yeah. What do you need? It's funny. Yeah. Um, so that's good. Yeah. Um, my question is this. Uh, how much time do you spend, like let's say I've submitted one of my wins is we've just run a webinar and we sold 50 people and it's yeah. great, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah. And I said what I really need right now is I need a better way to you know, keep clients engaged or to get them to do the homework, I'm just making this stuff up. Um, how, do yeah. you, how do you acknowledge what I've written on my sheet without, uh, and still ask the what do you need right question is first? Can you just run through the opening 60 seconds? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, depending on what the biggest win was or what they're working on, I may acknowledge the biggest win and go, Taki, that was really cool. Well done, right? And it'll be mm -hmm. short, sharp. I don't go into it. I don't want to know about it. I just want to go, yep, that was cool. Well, and then I use the what are you working on just to get a frame in my head. I don't ask about that necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, if they haven't really got needs right, then I might extrapolate out from what they're working on. Right? So based on what you're working on, Taki, what do you need right now? Because when they fill out the rap feed, certainly at the early stages, it's what they think they need, not actually what they need. Right? So it's really important that I ask that question, what do you re really need, you know, what do you need right now? And they may read off the rap sheet and go, well, I, I need this. But mo nine times out of ten, certainly at the early stage, it's what they think they need, not actually what they need. So by re-asking that question, it gets them to think in their head, do I really need this? Because if he's asking me, maybe I haven't got it right. Like they, they just start to explore in their head. And sometimes they absolutely have got it right, and after you've trained for a little bit, they'll get this, they'll nail this, uh, and then again it com becomes faster. But I always start with what do you need, because I want to hear it from their mouth. I don't want to just read it. Gotcha. Clear. Yeah? Yeah. Yep. Cool. So you acknowledge it, but you don't spend time there. No. No, 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 because we're likely to get into story if we're, if, you know, and stuff and script if we're not really careful. Plain, right? Because you're no, in control, clear. but you're not, all at the same yep. time. So, yeah, no, that's cool. Um, and so again, you know, it's about going from cap to being unlimited. When you start this process, you know, the sky's the limit with not only you know your results, but especially their results. 
And so there are three core skills that we teach in this process. And I'm just going to overlay them because we're going to go deep into them over the next few weeks. But I just wanted to share with you just briefly a little bit about them and then experience. So the first core skill that, that we teach is, is a skill called state management. And it's really about making sure that we're controlling their state of play, which is trying to keep them out. Because there's three things clients will generally uh, uh, generally sort of come with. Um, they're either going to come with stuff, right? And generally stuff that's happened over the last sort of two to four weeks, and uh, or, or since the last session. And often it's, it starts with a lot of finger pointing. You know, if only they didn't, if only they hadn't, if only this had to work or that had to work or something like that. So they're going to come with a high level of stuff, and it's quite analytical and it's quite sort of high level. Yep. Now, if they've thought about it long enough, what they're then going to do is drop into the next section, which is around story. So they're going to create a story around their stuff. Once they start creating a story, the number one thing <coughs> excuse me, they're going to want to do is recruit someone else. Because when you create a story around something, um, <coughs> unless someone else agrees with you, then your story can't be right. The minute you find someone else who agrees with your story, then the story is right and you can embed right. it even deeper. Right? So if clients come to you with a story, what they're trying to do is recruit you into the story and get you going, oh, yeah, you're right, you poor thing, and, you know, um, you know if, if only you know, this would happen or that would happen. And they start to drag you to the chat to go into the Society has grown, right? You know, back in the caveman days or, you know, after that in the ancient days, they told the story to be able to deliver um, you know, uh, what, you know, what has gone on in the society and, and, and the teachings in the society. The problem with today is that our stories now move into the drama angle rather than being positive stories. They go into drama and we're all addicted to drama, right? We've created a whole medium around drama called television. And so mm -hmm. we're addicted to drama. So it's really easy to get caught in the drama as a coach. So we've got to make sure we stay out of the drama. And then at the deeper level, once they've gone past the drama of story, they'll then embed it as a script. And they won't even know that they're running the script. So sometimes insights around script, script can be really, really beneficial. But we're going to show you how to manage state in the next session and how we deal with each of those three levels of state. Yeah? Yep. Perfect. Thank you. Great. Excellent. The next skill that, uh, that we look at is a thing called the art of the ask. Yep. And it's framed up by a process called feedback loop questioning technique. And uh, feedback loop questioning technique is the most powerful technique I know. And it's something I use constantly, not only in my professional life, but also in my personal life. And, uh, and it just embeds a whole lot of things in this one really simple technique, right? It's going to be the, one of the simplest techniques you've ever learned, but the hardest to master. And deeply embedded in that is uh, rapport building, is trust building, is active listening, is a whole range of really great things that You've probably been taught in the coaching that you've learned, but I, I put it into one really, really simple technique, and and that allows you to think of one thing rather than trying to think of three things. Like, oh my God, I've got to build rapport, and I've got to, you know, do all these, you know, I've got to active listen, and I, this one technique, um, you know, allows you to do that, and it's really, really simple. And we're going to do this one uh, next uh, next session, um, but it's about the art of the ask. How do I ask really clever questions? that are right on song, right on point, and are going to give me really great answers. Because the quality of your question leads to the quality of the answers. Right? So if your quality of questions is poor, then the answers you're going to get back from your client are going to be the same. And this is just going to drag time out while you desperately try and find um, you know, that sort of core issue or, or what's going on for them. Great. And then the final piece is around, uh, around intuitive intelligence. And I've got a really great process called First Thought Technique that allows anybody to be able to connect with that natural state of being, that thing that we were born with called intuitive intelligence. Um, and it's an especially great technique for left brain thinkers, right? Because often left brain thinkers have more trouble tapping into the intuition because it's quite a right brain, uh, um, right brain experience. Uh, and so I developed a technique to be able to teach CEOs and managers and people who are left brain. Uh, and, uh, and it's a fantastic, easy technique to, to allow you to get your intuitive intelligence out really fast. Because right? a couple of people answered about, you know, some of my value is my intuition. Um, but it's, you know, obviously it's slower. And so this technique helps you to nail it really, really fast. And it's a great, great process. Love that. 
Cool. Yeah. Excellent. And so, you know, for me, I want to help cut the, you know, the long road of coaching down. Right. Let's, uh, you know, let's not, you know, go on a long road where it's, you know, where we're taking clients on this long, boring journey of, you know, straight line. Let's let's get right in and rather than uh, driving a four-wheel drive, let's drive a, you know, let's drive a Porsche and get them moving really, really quickly. And that's the key. And so for Love me, that. it's about fast track success, and it's more about them than it is about us, as Taki said. You know, it's about getting them fast tracked and moving really, really quickly. And so, you know, for me, is if you know, if you guys could, you know, see more clients, um, you know, by you know, dropping your time down and keeping your hourly rate, or even increasing your hourly rate. I mean, how's that going to change your business? You know, what's 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 going to what's going to change in your world? And I don't. I think it's not just about your business and your practice. I think it's about your life. You know, because the thing that spurred me on to develop this was my daughter and my kids. And I go, I don't want to spend more time with them. I don't want to be, you know, energized and motivated and inspired and excited. And so, you know, what's going to change in your world if, you know, if you could do that, if you could stop being a commodity coach and, and really increase your value, increase your, you know, your hourly rate and see more clients maybe if that's what you, you know, if that's what you want to do. Yeah, love that. So Marcus, um, this has been really, really great. We've, we're going to wrap up in about uh, three minutes' time. Just before we do, what I'd love to do, if it's okay with you, is secretly I've been taking notes this whole way through, and I'd just love to share some of my biggest cool. insights. And uh, yeah, great. what I'd love everyone to do is just to kind of uh, make note of your biggest insights. So I'm going to share some of mine right now. What I'd love you to type in is kind of biggest takeaways from today. Is that cool, Marcus? I know I didn't ask yeah, you about this. Yeah, that's great. You know, no, no, perfect. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going yeah. to uh, just... Make me the yeah good good to have you back. <laughs> so what uh, was, what was you, your insight? <laughs> you let, me, let me share a few. I haven't got an insight yeah. about being kicked out other than no, that's just kind okay. of punctuation for the lesson I'm about to deliver. Can you see my screen right now? Yep. You can. I can. Yes, absolutely. Beautiful. Okay, that's awesome. So I had a, had a bunch, and I've been taking notes the whole way through. So the first thing was. Um, what we want to do is we want to position yourself as a coach where we lead with our value, not with our deliverables. The, the truth is that when somebody says yes to your coaching, it's never about the deliverables. It's, it's just that because we don't have better ways of explaining what we do, we kind of put the focus on, well, we're going to have a session a week and we're going to, you know, we're going to have these webinars. And it's not about that. It's, all, it's always about the outcome. It's always about the value. So we have, because we haven't given them anything else to ask about, the clients ask about number of hours and number of sessions because that's, you know, we haven't given them anything else. It's not their fault. They just don't know better. Yeah, we talked about is is three minutes real? Yeah, well, um, it's about removing the filler so we can get to the core issue fast. Yeah, uh, you talked about um, meeting the market, and the market's going. You know, you know, the world is getting faster and faster, and coaching hasn't evolved at the same way that technology has evolved. You know, no. it used to be at the speed of conversation, and, and now it's at the speed of touch or the speed of motion. Now it's at the speed of thought, and so. Yeah, we have right. this kind of weirdness about let's increase, you know, let's kind of fill the time because we've got the time that we, we should use it because somehow if we cut it, if we cut things short, we're robbing people of value. Well, it's not true at all. With the specific outcome and having them take action and get momentum, and we're going to talk about the how in our next two sessions. Yeah. Um, again, left to right, what do they need is the first part. Uh, next is what do they find? What's the insight that popped? And then what are they going to do next? Yeah. Yeah, um, perfect. This is the first question that you should be asking. It's the first question on the rap sheet, uh, first question in a, in a coaching session, which is what do you really need right now, as opposed to how's your week been, which is a really dumb first question and then people know why. Yeah. Um, Perfect. Perfect. It's not about driving time down. It's about driving value up. I think that's just a really big insight for people. Yeah, I agree. Perfect. Um, uh, you know, you might have a membership site or a webinar or a thing, but your stuff is valuable, but it's not your value. That was just a massive takeaway for me. I really, really love that. So thank you. Um, Pleasure. Yeah, you know, the the rap sheet is really about kind of what are your biggest wins, what are you working on right now, and what do you need? Yes. Now, state management was about taking people out of stuff, out of story, and out of script, and into present about what they what they actually need. Like as as long as they're in their stuff or their story or their script, they're not in not in a place to kind of receive the value that they need to get. Uh, we talked about feedback loop questioning, which we're going to go into in depth in our next section, which is about uh, a series of questions that we ask to move people to insight. And intuitive intelligence is kind of like a, a, pro a process for us, kind of left, uh, you know, maybe some of us, uh, I'll own it, more left brain people, to access the right brain without 
getting too woo woo and spooky. Is that cool? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So there's some of the kind of the big insights I got, and I'd love to know what everybody else found uh, most useful. So hopefully you've been typing those in. Let me um, uh, let's have a quick look. Uh, totally awesome, insightful session. Thank you so much, says Jackie, who's up late in the UK. Um, Ellen says, I love framing the concept of value-based coaching as I'm not fond of the idea of speed coaching. Totally agree. It's not about speed. It's about value up, which is this page right here. Ellen, love that. Yeah. Uh, the wrap sheet is great, and I can see how I can use this in conjunction with the longer in-person strategy sessions, which can be less frequent. Yes. Um, I help my clients formulate ideas and solve problems they can't see without a catalyst. Love that. Um, Uh, three minutes. Oh yeah, sorry. I'm reading this piece. Which can you see Jim's there? I like Jim's. Hang on, just one sec. Of, yeah, sorry. Uh, effective. So Wayne says you can be much more effective with much less time. Uh, Kevin said laser focus. What do you really need right now? It's just a great way to get out of. I have to say that at the start of the webinar, I was thinking, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I'm thinking, yes, yes, yeah. What was the yeah. biggest insight, Jim, that you got that kind of helped you shift from? Man, 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 too. Wow. Removing fluff does not compromise perception of value. No, it actually increases yeah. perception of value. That kind of counseling uh, therapy question you had earlier. Insights. Sell my value and my insights by keeping the client away from the totally unnecessary fluff and go deep fast. Love that. That I can move from one Edward plant um, to get on with their lives. It totally does. Yeah, it does. Uh, and get better results. Yeah. Um, yeah, the first question and the rap sheet removes the fluff. Love that, Jim. Yeah. Um, Marcus. Yeah. Thanks, bro. This has been super, super hey. great. Yeah, it has. Let's talk about uh, two things. Number one, if you haven't already got these dates in your calendar, this is when we're, so today was the system, which is uh, the overview. In our next section, we're going to talk about how to open the client, which is about uh, the feedback loop questioning and how to start a session strong. Uh, that's on the 11th of July, Sydney time. It might be the 10th, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, and we'll put a note up in Facebook about that. Um, our third session is on creating change, which is the 25th of July. Again, it could be the 24th, depending on where you are in the world. And that's about the week before our next Black Belt um, Intensive here in Sydney. So Marcus, dude, this has been killer. Thank you so much. I'm sure that people are going to have questions and, and your upcoming seminar, yes. your three-minute coach training. Uh, yes. Adam and I did it in December last year. And you've got one happening, uh, I think, just after or just before the next Black Belt. Yeah, is that right? Just, just after the Black Belt in Sydney, yeah. OK, so the Black Belt is kind of Thursday, Friday, and you're doing Saturday, Sunday? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, super cool. So listen, um, rather than turn this into infomercial, let's just find out a little bit more about your uh, about your event. What's the best email address they could get in touch with you about? Uh, yeah, just uh, email me at marcus at marcusbird.com.au. Cool. Marcus at marcusbird.com. Uh, yeah, Adam and I went, and when Adam came down, like Adam's been coaching for a ton of years and was just like, yeah, yeah like, I think we're probably good without it, um, but I can't learn less, so let's have a go. And he was blown away and it just changed his whole paradigm around coaching and what's possible. So uh, yeah. as well as gave him a bunch of tools that he didn't have before. I think it's totally worth doing. So if you want to find out more about that, uh, marcus at marcusbird.com.au is where to email and uh, you know, you'll be really glad you did. Um, yeah, guys, uh, Marcus, I just want to say thank you so much. Uh, my yeah, notes as well as the slides and the recording of this will be up online by Monday. If you want to go back and have a listen, you're more than welcome to. Um, otherwise, guys, thank you so much and thank you, yeah, thanks, guys. Marcus. Brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks, guys. Loved it. Thanks, Taki. Oh, Eric's saying, what about if we're in the US? Is there anything online? Uh, at the yeah. moment, these webinars are online. Um, yes. Dude, maybe we'll... Email Marcus if you're, if you're keen and maybe we'll try to work out a time just after the US black belt. And uh, yeah, if Marcus yeah, is up for it, cool. super happy to do yeah. it. Yeah, that sounds great. Love to. Cool. Brilliant. Um, everyone right. say thank you. Awesome. Hey, Marcus, this has been great. Really appreciate it. And I'll talk to yeah, you soon. Thanks, man. Excellent. Thanks, buddy. See you. Cheers, man. Bye-bye. All right, guys, let's call this webinar done. Appreciate your time. Appreciate your attention. And uh, get out there and make some difference in the world. Talk to you soon.